Hey everybody, this is Chris from Project Option, and in today's video I want to talk about volatility skew. So if you're familiar with implied volatility, you'll know that implied volatility is represented as one number, and that's based on the aggregation of a bunch of different options on a particular stock. However, individual options trade with their own levels of implied volatility, and that's because they all have their own unique prices. So in this video, we're going to actually talk about the difference between out of the money call and put implied volatility and what that means in terms of volatility skew. So let's get right into it. So what is volatility skew? Well, a stock's overall implied volatility number is derived from strips of options on that stock, but each option actually trades with its own level of implied volatility, and that's of course because each option has its own price. So volatility skew refers to the inequality of implied volatilities for out-of-the-money calls and out-of-the-money puts. So for example, if the implied volatilities of out-of-the-money puts exceeds that of the out-of-the-money calls, then volatility is said to be skewed to the downside because the out-of-the-money puts are trading at prices that are more expensive than the out-of-the-money calls at similar distances from the stock price. Now, volatility skew informs us of the relative demand between calls and puts. So let's dive a little bit deeper and look at some examples. So let's start with an example of downside volatility skew. So in the following table, we're looking at 35-day puts and calls on SPX, and this is on February 9th, 2017. Now, at the time of these option prices, SPX was trading for $2,308. Now we're going to look at the at the money puts and calls and then we're going to look at the put that's $100 below the, the stock price and the call that's about $100 above the stock price. So as we can see here, the 2210 put is trading for $7.75 and that's generating an implied volatility of 13.7%. Now the 2310 put is right about at the same price as SPX and that's trading for $29, which is generating an implied volatility of 10%. Now the 2310 call is right about the same place and it's trading for $24, which is generating an implied volatility of 8.5%. And the 2410 call, which is about 100 points above the current SPX price, is trading for $1.25, which is generating an implied volatility of 8.2%. So what we really want to compare here is the price of the put that's $100 below SPX and the price of the call that's 100 points above SPX as comparing those option prices and those implied volatilities can give us an idea of where volatility is skewed. So as we can see, the 2210 put is trading for $7.75 with an implied volatility of 13.7%. And the 2410 call is trading for $1.25 or an 8.2% implied volatility. So clearly, we can see that the demand for an out-of-the-money put is significantly more than the demand for an out-of-the-money call. And as such, the implied volatility of that out-of-the-money put is much higher than the implied volatility of the out-of-the-money call. And that's just because that put is more expensive. So why is volatility skewed to the downside in SPX? Well, let's consider a couple factors. So to understand why downside volatility skew occurs, Let's consider the most common equity positions. So first and foremost, most people own stocks. Now, there are a couple things you can do with a long stock position to either limit the downside risk or enhance the potential returns. The first thing you can do is you can buy downside puts to limit the loss potential on that long stock position. Now, another thing you can do is you can sell calls against your long stock to potentially enhance the returns while reducing the volatility of your position. Now lastly, markets tend to crash downwards and grind upwards. So when markets fall, they tend to do so with a lot of velocity, and when markets rise, they tend to do so very gradually. So all of these things together create more demand for downside puts and less demand for upside calls, and therefore we have more expensive downside puts and less expensive upside calls, which leads to downside volatility skew in most equities. Now what about upside volatility skew? So upside volatility skew occurs when out of the money calls trade at higher implied volatilities or prices than out of the money puts that are similarly distanced from the stock price. So this typically occurs in volatility related products. So in this example, we're looking at VXX on February 9th, 2017. 
Now VXX is a volatility product that tracks the performance of near-term VIX futures contracts, so that means that when the VIX rises substantially, those near-term VIX futures should rise as well, and therefore VXX will also rise. So VXX is a long volatility product. So in these option prices, we're looking at 36-day options, and we're looking at calls and puts that are at similar distances from the current price of VXX. So let's start with the 15 put. So the 15 put is $3.50 lower than the current VXX price, and that 15 put is trading with a price of $0.05. Cents. Now that's generating an implied volatility of 41.4%. Now if we look at the 18 put, that's 50 cents lower than VXX, and that's, that option is worth $1.07, and it's trading with an implied volatility of 55.3%. Moving up to the 19 call, which is 50 cents higher than VXX, that 19 call is trading for $1.11 at an implied volatility of 58.5%. And lastly, if we look at the 22 call, which is $3.50 higher than VXX, we see that the call is trading for $0.54, cents, which is generating an implied volatility of 70.2%. So when we look at the 15 put, which is $3.50 lower than VXX, and compare it to the 22 call, which is $3.50 higher than VXX, we can see that the 15 put is trading for $0.05 cents with an implied volatility of 41.4%, while the 22 call is trading for $0.54 cents with an implied volatility of 70.2%. So as we can see here, the out of the money call is trading for a higher price and higher implied volatility than the out of the money put, and therefore implied volatility is skewed to the upside. So when is it typical to see upside volatility skew? So upside volatility skew tends to occur in products in which the risk is to the upside. Now this is common in volatility products such as VIX options, VXX options and UVXY options because those products tend to explode higher when the market falls and to benefit from those upside movements in the volatility products calls on those products can be purchased so that explains why out of the money calls trade with higher prices and implied volatilities than the out of the money puts on those products so now that you know what volatility skew is let's go ahead and discuss three things that volatility skew can tell you so volatility skew can tell us three important pieces of information. The first is the direction in which the risk is perceived to be in the underlying. The second is how implied volatility should change relative to movements in the underlying. And the third is the prices of call spreads and put spreads on that underlying. So let's go ahead and walk through each of these with examples. So firstly, an underlying's perceived risk can be uncovered by looking at the volatility skew. So first of all, down, downside volatility skew indicates that the market is pricing in more risk related to decreases in the underlying, while upside volatility skew indicates that the market is pricing in more risk related to increases in the underlying. So let's go ahead and look at an example between the S&P 500 and the VIX index. So in this chart, we're looking at the S&P 500 index, and then we're also comparing the VIX index, which is the implied volatility of one-month options on the S&P 500 index. So as we know, the S&P 500 index typically trades with downside volatility skew, and that's an indication that the risk is priced to the downside. Now, as we can see here, the market tends to grind up slowly, but when it falls, it tends to do so very rapidly, and sometimes with very large movements. So as we can see here, when the market falls, the VIX index tends to rise, and sometimes substantially. And that just shows us that as the S&P 500 falls, the options on the S&P 500, or the implied volatility of the S&P 500 options, tends to increase. So the market trading with downside volatility skew means that if the market falls, implied volatility is expected to increase. Now let's look at an example of how implied volatility changes in an underlying with upside volatility skew. So for this we'll look at the VIX index relative to the implied volatility of options on the VIX index. So products with upside volatility skew tend to experience increases in implied volatility when the underlying rises. So a great example of this is the relationship between the VIX and VIX option implied volatility, which is quantified by VVIX. So as we can see here, anytime the VIX index rises, we can see that the VIX option implied volatility, or VVIX, also rises. 
Conversely, when the VIX index falls, we can see that VIX option implied volatility, or VVIX, also falls. Now this can be explained by the fact that when the VIX is rising, that is an indication that the market is falling, and when the market is falling, people have higher demand for protection, and one way to protect against further decreases in the market is to buy VIX call options. Now the increased demand for VIX call options leads to an increase in prices of those call options and also put options since those prices are tied together, which leads to an increase in implied volatility of VIX options. Now on the other side of the equation, when the VIX index is falling, that's typically an indication that the market is rising. And when the market is rising, market participants are much more complacent and therefore the demand for crash protection decreases, which leads to cheaper VIX option prices, which in turn leads to a lower VIX option implied volatility or VVIX. Now the last important piece of information that volatility skew can tell us is which spreads will be more expensive. So particularly call spreads and put spreads. So call spreads typically trade cheap and put spreads trade expensive in products with upside volatility skew and put spreads trade cheap and call spreads trade expensive in products with downside volatility skew. So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples to really see what this means. So let's look at an example of spread prices on SPX, which has downside volatility skew. So at the time of these option prices, the SPX was trading for 23.10, and we're looking at options with 35 days to expiration. So on the very far left column, we're looking at the long option, the price, and the implied volatility. And in the middle column, we're looking at the short option, the price, and the implied volatility. And in the very right, we're looking at the spread's price relative to how wide the strikes are. So in both cases, we're going to be looking at, at the money, 50 point wide, put spreads and call spreads. So first of all, the 2310 put is worth $28 with a 10% implied volatility. And the put that's 50 points lower, the 2260 put, is trading for $13.50 with an 11.7% implied volatility. Now the spread price in that case is going to be $14.50 on a $50 wide spread. Now if we look at the call spread, we're buying the 2310 call for $25.50 and that option's trading with an 8.5% implied volatility. And we're selling the 2360 call for $6 or a 7.7% implied volatility, and that leads to a $19.50 spread price on a spread that's $50 wide. So as we can see here, the put spread is trading $5 cheaper than the call spread, and both spreads are 50 points wide. Now this can be explained by the fact that we're buying a call with 8.5% implied volatility and selling a call with 7.7% implied volatility compared to buying a 10% implied volatility put and selling an 11.7 implied volatility put. So since we're selling a higher implied volatility option in the put spread, and we're selling a cheaper implied volatility call in the call spread, we see a cheaper put spread and a more expensive call spread. Now what does this look like on a product with upside volatility skew? Alright, so let's look at an example of spread prices on VXX, which has upside volatility skew. So at the time of these option prices, VXX was trading for $18.35, and we're looking at the options with 36 days until expiration. So in the first example, we're buying the 18 put and selling the 16 put, and that 18 put's trading for $1.10 with an implied volatility of 55.4%, and the 16 put is trading for $0.23, cents or an implied volatility of 46.2%. So when you put those prices together, we get a put spread that's 87 cents on a $2 wide spread. Now if we look at the call spread, we can see that the 19 call is trading for $1.09 with an implied volatility of 58.3% and the 21 call is trading for 66 cents with an implied volatility of 66.2%. Now as we can see, the price of that spread is 43 cents and it's also $2 wide. So on a product with upside volatility skew, we observe cheaper call spreads and more expensive put spreads, and that's because those higher strike calls are trading with higher prices and higher implied volatilities than lower strike puts. So to summarize the main concepts from this video, individual options trade with their own levels of implied volatility based on their respective prices, strike prices relative to this current stock price, and amount of time until expiration. 
Now in products where out of the money puts are more expensive than out of the money calls with similar distances from the stock price, volatility is skewed to the downside. Conversely, in products where out of the money calls are more expensive than out of the money puts with similar distances from the stock price, volatility is skewed to the upside. Now, volatility skew can tell us three helpful pieces of information, with the first being the direction of the perceived risk. So as we saw, the market tends to trade with downside volatility skew, and that's because the perceived risk is to the downside, which can be explained by the fact that markets tend to fall very quickly and rise rather gradually. Now the second thing that volatility skew can tell us is how implied volatility is likely to change relative to the underlying movements. So in a product with a downside volatility skew, implied volatility is expected to increase when that product falls. Now in a product with upside volatility skew, implied volatility is expected to rise when that product rises. Now lastly, volatility skew can tell us which spreads will be more expensive and which will be cheaper. So in products with a downside volatility skew, put spreads tr tend to trade cheaper and call spreads tend to trade more expensive. And in products with upside volatility skew, call spreads tend to trade cheaper and put spreads trade more expensive. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. If you enjoyed this and learned something, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the circle on the bottom left. And if you want to check out some more videos of ours, click on the video on the right side.